following is a presentation of the iRacing Esports Network. When it comes to Silverstone, it may be one of the more flatter and wider tracks on the V8 Super Trucks Championship circuit, but it is also potentially going to be one of the most challenging races of the season. The V8 Super Trucks Championship heads into the halfway point of the season today here from beautiful Silverstone Circuit, and it's all going to be seen up next on iRacing Esports Network, trying to carry the momentum from last week's round at Brands Hatch. course 27 laps as Zelensky again the control car waiting for the green flag of the flag stand and away they go we're off and away here from Brands Hatch going now towards Logan Clampett going for the attack and he's going to go for a slide through the car oh. bouncing off a car that is I believe Andre getting bounced off yellow flag comes out side by side Blitzen and Kamerz going for late breaking into Druids as Zelensky goes wide Heading down towards Black Kevin. He is 66. That's Sven Kevin. He's trying to make a recovery after going off at Graham Hill Bay. Rooney. Rooney's had an incident. Oh, and he's been rear-ended. And the and yellow. Yeah. Here we go as the race clutch trucks lead them down, down the Brabham Strait towards the Paddock Hill Bend. And Cameron. Oh, has... 42. Sam Harris. Big, big incident. Approaching now, 12 laps to go as the green flag's up in the air. Away we go as Zelensky's getting a nice grip, clean start. Eric Blix, he's going to go towards the bottom side. Right now, side by side with Marco Muldren. Has to hit the brakes on the bottom side as he's going to fall back to P number three. Side by side on the left side on the preferred line. And Clampett just makes it look easy, able to clear on by. Go up towards Marco Muldren. Hold in now where Bobby Zelensky is trying to keep away because the gap has shrunk in the past lap from 1.5 seconds to one second flat. Bobby Zelensky continues to dominate. He'll come away with a victory at Brands Hatch in the V8 Super Trucks Championship and continue his strong run with his 11th career win in the series. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the V8 Super Trucks Championship for round number seven from the Silverstone Circuit here in beautiful UK. Tonight, the home of British Motorsports will be seeing one of the toughest races of the entire season here at the halfway point here on the iRacing Esports Network and brought to you by Racebot TV. Good evening, I'm Justin Prince. Alongside me in the booth tonight is Paul Smith for what should be a great race. 20 laps in total is expected for tonight's race. A very slick track as well. That's going to be tough to tame here for tonight's action here, Paul. Yep, it certainly is. Good evening, everybody. As, as you, you can, can see, see with the track right now, track temp's about 24 degrees Celsius, 75 degrees Fahrenheit. Track temp, 84 degrees Fahrenheit. Partly cloudy skies, 10 kilometers per hour, with the track distance being about 5 kilometers or 3.1 miles in 17 turns. Track record is held by Spen Kamertz as he tries to try and best that, as you see the fastest lap for him at a minute 50.727 from last season. Right now, a lot of drivers 
trying to carry momentum so far this season and the person that's had basically just about all of it has been Bobby Zelensky leading the point standings with 525 points followed by Marco Mogren who's sitting in seventh right now five wins for Zelensky to lead the standings right behind him is Ben Kamertz who has been close to victories multiple times this season he looks to get win number one tonight followed by Eric Blix who had a eight-point penalty after last round's race. We'll get to in a few moments. Logan Clampett, he's taken a drop this week, is in the fifth spot in the standings, fall by Wade Hayes, Martin Kapal, Justin Kruitoff, Diego Moro, and James King to round out the top ten in the standings. Of course, there are multiple different championships here for this series, one of them being the team standings. Radicals on lines on the top of the standings right now with 474 points, Slip Angle Motorsports with 390. Limp Falls Racing has 371, followed by work of a kinetic racing. Off Camber Motorsports rounds out the top five. Team Mad is separated with their two different entries by Team Bushfink Racing 6 through 8. Well, Torque Freak Racing Blanchemont and Race Clutch round out the top 10 for the team standing. It's just, just the drivers and the team standings that are, are important for this series. There's also the Manufacturers Championship. That's getting very close. 559 points so far for Chevrolet. Toyota sits at 529 points. As well, there are the Road and Oval Championship, led by the Road side with 560 points. 524 so far for the Oval Championship. But with that, it's going to be a competitive race as you see competitive championships so far. Paul, welcome to the broadcast booth. Today's should be a wild one for sure here at Silverstone. Yeah, good evening everyone. Yeah, it should be a, a really good broadcast here, that's for sure. It's a small grid. Uh, there's 11 drivers in the session. There's three drivers who cannot uh, set a qualifying time. But there's the qualifying times as they stand so far. But Mr. Lenski, hardly surprised really. He's out there on pole position at the moment as he's going across the line once again to set another lap. He doesn't set a lap time that time but he's, uh, he's going around just to get a bit more practice around this track. But uh, Bobby Zelensky this season so far has just been absolutely imperious. He's been uh, unbeatable so far. Yeah, right now he's just been putting on an absolute clinic. Six races completed into the season right now. Following along with Spen Kamertz, who was the top driver in practice. That practice time was a minute 52.803. Of course, as you see, about half a second back now. One caveat, Solensky was not in that session, so first test to see how they he compares to him as he tries to complete our lap here on track. Yep, we'll see how it goes, and uh, practice has been tough. Apparently, it was a little bit slippy in the practice session mm -hmm. for these drivers, so uh, conditions under, uh, under the tyre are going to be crucial here. Uh, air temperature 75 degrees Fahrenheit, track temperature 83 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, so uh, that track is going to feel uh, not 100% great as uh, Sven Kermes is just practicing, just getting a little bit of uh, practices at, at the restarts here because uh, we could end up, of course, seeing a, a safety car, a caution, full course caution or two. So uh, you never know with this series, but it's a wide open track. Hopefully, we won't see that today. Hopefully we don't see that either right now. About a minute left in qualifying. A lot of drivers are taking laps in or practicing right now. Thomas O'Leary is the one on the screen. There was a penalty given to a few drivers. Two drivers not allowed to qualify. Clifton Cockrell and Daniel Thompson. Eric Blix also not allowed to put in a time after a race incident in round number six. That led to the eight points being lost as a penalty for that as part of a tier two preventative occurrence. And that's gonna be something that will, with the small field, not be the main hurtful thing today, but it's gonna add a bit more of a challenge as that's gonna put him at the back. It certainly is. You've got a few, uh, few teams as well uh, missing drivers today due to commitments. I know that Team Mad have, uh, have combined their efforts due to uh, Asher Blake Hood, who we only saw in the first round of the championship having to drop out from the series and David Crozier as well also having to drop out. So Team Mad all going under the uh, the Team Mad uh, banner. But uh, even then, Majek Sakovic not there today. He's at, uh, he's at Silverstone. Uh, for the formula student so uh, yeah good luck to him but uh, I think we're ready for a grid here 
I think so too. Qualifying times are all set to go. As you can see, here's your starting grid for round number seven of the V8 Super Trucks Championship. Bobby Zelensky will start on the pole today. Set a time half a second faster than Spen Kamertz to be on the front row. Gabriel Ruse will be in third spot, followed by Thomas O'Leary, who is a full second behind Zelensky. Behind that, another half second back is James King, followed by Diego Melro. Justin Kruitoff and Josh A John Allen, pardon me, round out the drivers who have qualified. And behind that, the three drivers not allowed to put in times for today are Eric Blixt, Clifton Cockrell, and Daniel Thompson. So that's the 11 truck grid today for the Sox Out Racing V8 Super Trucks Championship as everyone's going to have to take about a full lap around the racetrack right now. This track, as we I talked about a little bit in the intro, is while flat, can still be a very challenging track. And again, partly because that's like this, partly because Silverstone, such a historic track, is very difficult. Yeah, it certainly is a difficult track to, to master. It's flat because it used to be a World War II bomber airfield, so uh, used to be used for that. And then at the end of the war, they, uh, they started racing around the uh, perimi perimeter roads here at the track. So uh, a, a historical venue, that's for sure, in terms of British motorsports. And uh, it certainly does give us some great racing. We saw some great racing last year in the V8 Super Trucks as well. And as the uh, the grid forms, we'll be going for that uh, that pace lap. We'll be able to talk you through some of these turns here on uh, on this circuit. It is a tricky track, as I say. And that start line, it's right there. So you're coming around Woodcut, the final corner, two by two for the start. One little mistake, and uh, you could end up with a big wreck right at the start of the race, or even any restarts. That's for sure. We've seen a few drivers actually go to the grass in the warm-ups as well on top of the practice session today as they work their way through cops and work their way towards maggots. Now, one thing to note is you see here with the pit exit on this side, there are two different pit exits. The old exit that they're passing by and the new one where the white line is. All drivers have been instructed basically to take the new exit so drivers can see the other trucks coming out and to do not use the lawn exit to try and prevent any incidents on an exit since you can potentially use both. Yeah, iRacing doesn't uh, doesn't stop people using the old pit exit here. And uh, that mean, the old pit exit, it, it brings people out right into the racing line, which you would naturally take for mm -hmm. Maggots and then Beckett. So uh, definitely uh, it's not ideal. And you've got that classic sight down the hangar straight there. And it just doesn't, it just looks different with these trucks on the track for me. As a, as a Brit, as a, as a person from the UK, as a Mudspot fan from the UK, that just doesn't, that looks different. It's a good different though. Mm hmm. As you can see, they continue to work their way down towards basically the end of the Hainer straight just about here. There are two onboard streams for today's broadcast, brought to you by Off Camera Motorsports is Justin Kruitoff with a helmet camera. Also on an onboard camera is Team Bushwick Racing's James King. Those are the two onboards for today. But of course, as they continue to work their way around the course, past Vale towards Club, this is going to be a race where stra some strategy might have to come into play here, especially with the, how the tires are going to handle today. Yeah, it's it's all about how the tyres go. It's a 20 lap race, so we expect to see people uh, coming in uh, somewhere around the halfway mark. You don't have to take fuel. You just have to change tyres in this series, and uh, uh, and really these these drivers are going to have to to work hard and to try and make those tyres last as long as possible. But uh, one thing we've got to mention as well, the Hard Charger Award. It's going to be really difficult for, for us to pick a Hard Charger in today's field with mm -hmm. it being such a, such a smaller grid today, unfortunately. Yeah, it's going to be a challenge for sure with the Hard Charger Award, which is, of course, the I Analyze Hard Charger Award. It gives it one month of I Analyze Racing to one driver for each round of the season for two non-podium drivers to get race positive change in position, the biggest mover, and the most exciting. 
So that's going to be a challenge to see who will be in either of those categories today with this 11 truck field as they continue to work their way through the final parts of the track through left field. Bobby Zelensky will be on the right side of the grid. On the left side, Sven Kamertz. Pace cars getting ready to come off the racetrack. There it goes, clipping the edge of the grass. Coming down the front straightaway, coming out of Woodcote. Zelensky will wait for the green flag, and away we go for round number seven of the V8 Super Trucks Championship from the Silverstone Circuit. And a good start for Zelensky to be able to keep that racing line. Gabriel Russo a single fall, but Thomas O'Leary, a great run through cops to make it side by side for P3. Yeah, he's certainly doing a good job as O'Leary, having to slot in behind Ruse, though, as they're going through into Beckett's for the first time. These trucks, not as planted as the uh, the F1 cars that we're used to seeing around here, but uh, they're certainly uh, giving us a good show. And Kemez is all over the back of Zelensky in these early goings here, so Zelensky looks like he's got a bit of work to do here today. Yeah, Bobby Zelensky had just has five of the first six wins, remember, so far this season. And he had a big bobble coming out of the corner right there. That was coming out of Stowe as they worked the way towards Vail for the sharp left-hander. Spen is keeping up with them as well as Gabriel Ruse as Ruse just lost a couple tenths sliding his way through a club. So easy to do that. It's a tricky corner. You've got to be patient on the gas there, on the exit around that uh, right-hander. Onto the brakes again. You see the trucks dive down at the front when they hit those brakes hard into the Abbey chicane. And uh, Ruse is going to end up losing that position. And O'Leary is through up into third place through bridge. They'll now come through Priory towards Brooklyn's now as O'Leary is trying to make himself come more forward and forward and forward. He's off to a good start. Gabriel Ruse is now swallowed up a little bit behind him by James King behind him. Justin Krutoff, Diego Melro, and Eric Blixt rounding out the top 10. Just inside the top 10, I should really say, is John Allen. Daniel Thompson and Clifton Cockrell bring up the rear of, the rear of that group as they come across the start and finish line to complete the first lap of this 20-lap rate. Of course, in the series, you do not need to take fuel, but again, tires are going to be coming the play here today and when you decide to come to pit yeah that's gonna be uh, it's gonna be huge here is that Sven Kemmer's are on board with here and look at it he's, he's certainly giving Bobby Zelensky a thing or two to think about don't forget he did set that flat, fastest lap last year with Sven so he feels real confident around this track and down the hangar straight is in that draft of Zelensky certainly put the pressure on uh, like we've not seen really this season as Zelensky running wide through Stur. And that almost opened up the door for Commerce who came second in last year's event here at the Silverstone Circuit. Trying to make the crossover, maybe the switch back through Vail coming towards club and through club now. Almost got towards the back end as Commerce is going to really slide his way on the exit of the club. Keeps up behind him as they are continuing to have a decent spread now to Thomas O'Leary. Meanwhile, inside, just inside the top 10, trying to move themselves up to the top 10 is Daniel Thompson, as he really has to go for the early breaking there alongside John Allen. Now Clifton Cockrell will try and go for the pass as they work the way out of Abbey and towards Bridge. Yeah, action further down your field. It's not just at the front in this series you get action all the way through the field here with the v8 super trucks but look at this at the front here zelensky under pressure we'll get an idea of what the lap times are like as they go across the t across the uh, the stripe and uh well we won't get an idea of what the lap times look like because the lap times didn't work so <laughs> that's uh, that's always uh, a good one uh, to maybe look at oh and oh. Zelensky running wide there and it's gonna be side by side through maggots into beckett's but oh that was very close he, he actually cut through the grass there and almost cut along the front nose of Kamertz there paul yeah now i would be surprised if he hasn't got a slow down penalty here I really would be surprised. He's still going, is Bobby. But he's under intense pressure. 
from Sven here on the brakes again. And Sven taking that wide line through Stur. And do you know what? This might work out for him. If he holds it on that left-hand side, he's got the inside for Vale. And he, Bobby Zelensky is just going to let him on go. So Sven Kamertz is going to put himself up into the lead, going through Vale and now approaching club. As now, he's now falling to second. That's opened up the door for Thomas O'Leary, who last time by was 1.7 seconds back. Now he's just about four or five truck lengths back of Zelensky because of all the battling. Yeah, absolutely. These drivers, they, uh, with that battling, has allowed O'Leary to catch up. A through bridge they go. And I tell you what, we're in uncharted territory this season, aren't we? We've come out in the lead now ahead of Zelensky. And now the question is, can Kamertz hold on to it? You can see side-by-side -side action as Gabriel Ruth continues to potentially slide down the board. James King from Team Bushfink Racing is trying to make the move on the outside line. Coming through left field towards Wood, Wood Coat. Can't keep up the momentum there, so he's still side by side with Gabriel Ruse. Can he make the move now coming onto the outside of Cops? He's just gonna let Ruse keep the spot for now and try and save the tires and go for the crossover as King slides his way a little bit, loses momentum there. He'll fall back to stay in P5 for the time being as Eric Blix does it join the battle here. Yeah, King uh, certainly pushing and pushing hard here in that truck and uh, you can see how already with him battling that last lap he was uh, about eight tenths of a or six tenths of a second slower than his best lap in this race we're on lap four already in this race a nice clean race so far in this one and uh, we've not got the uh, the caution fest that we had last time out at brands hatch yeah, that was a wild race at Brands Hatch for round number six, to say the very least. Gabriel Ruse is going to go for a wild slide as he's able to keep the spot for time through being for Vail, working his way now through club. As you see how slick this track is, Ta track temp, the dynamic track temp, back up to 84 degrees now as drivers continue to side slide their way through some of these corners. Ruse continues to try and keep P number four for the hard charging James King who's looking for any opportunity as they work their way under the bridge, tries to get faster and faster, backs up the corner. And for at least now, I think Ruse is in a decent spot here as he's now starting to pull away a little bit through these tight sections now through Brooklyn's now to left field away from King as he's now being swallowed up by Blixt. Yeah, Blixt behind, you can see him in that Lempel's car. King just having to get out the throttle on the exit of Luffield then. So many of these corners, you have to be careful with your application of the throttle. Because you've got to be patient through many of these corners. Club and Luffield, definitely two of those. You don't want to run too wide out of cops because, yeah, there's some AstroTurf there, but there's also some grass there. Look at that! Look into the outside of Maggots into Beckett's. Blix not able to make the move. He's making his way through the field, is uh, Blix. And he's trying to get King, but King able to hold on for the time being. But uh, still, close action all the way through this field, even though it is, as we're saying, a relatively small field compared to normal for this series. They're still providing us with excellent action. As Zelensky now starting to put the pressure back on your race leader, Kemet. He is right now, last time by, set the fastest lap for him of the race, a 154.013. That was faster than the 154.063 set by Kamertz, as Thomas O'Leary has fallen back to the 154.2s. So Zelensky is in a decent spot here. Kamertz goes sliding a little bit, going through Abbey and approaching the way towards Bridge. So Zelensky is keeping up with them. It's just a matter of trying to get to the position to make the pass work here being about four tenths back. Yeah, that's, uh, that, that's it as uh, the great Murray Walker used to say. Catching is one thing, passing is quite another. Zelensky, you've got to be patient. Look at him get closer on the mid corner.
corner, but then has to hold off until the exit before he gets on the power. And that's where Kermit's... Oh, look at that switch from Kermit's through Woodcut there. Across the line they go for another lap. On to start a lap six here. And oh, Zelensky having to get out of it there. Through Cop's corner. Oh, Kermit's is all over the place. This is real pressure here from these two. They're carrying a lot of speed through these corners too, about 135 miles per hour. They go through the Astral Turf, go, cutting through Maggots as they work their way now through Beckett's and towards Chapel, the Chapel being the left-hander, as you see here, to get onto the Hainer straight. Speeds continue to pick on up. This is now 225 kilometers per hour on the upshift. That's now towards 156 miles per hour for comparison. And again, now Thomas O'Leary starting to close back in as these two are battling once again. So Thomas O'Leary continues to be in that catbird seat in P number three as they pull away from the rest of the pack. Gabriel Ruiz in fourth. James King still fighting with Eric Blix for P number five. Yep, he certainly is. It's hard to keep everyone in. Look at Kemas drifting that car through Club the Car, that truck through Club Corner. I do this every broadcast with this series, but uh, Bob Zelensky looking to the inside at Abbey. Oh, Kemes is out of oh, out of shape there. And thank you very much, Zelensky's through. And not just that, Thomas O'Leary is through. So big mistake from Sven Kamertz ends up costing him potentially up to two spots here after taking it in too hard on the braking zone heading towards through Abbey and towards Bridge. So a big mistake. And you'll see this on the replay once again, as we are talking about this a bit here once again, Paul, about how slippery this track is and how slick it will be. This, in this case, ends up being a side swipe as he locks up the brakes a bit and ends up costing him a couple spots. Yeah, that was all about locking up those rears on the down change of the gears. And uh, you can see O'Leary alongside, able to get in the power a little bit earlier. As we stay on that replay, and Kemet is having to get out of it. But crucially, at the front, as we go back live, Zelensky's already pulled out a 1.4 second lead here. And that just shows how, where if you make one mistake, you can lose that much time. And that was the case there. So now Kamertz is going to have to deal with O'Leary. And if you're Zelensky, you're thinking, this is exactly what I wanted to see right now, is this is going to potentially cost Kamertz even more so time. If he can find a way past O'Leary, he continues to slide his way down. As pit road is now open here on lap number 7 of 20 for round number 7 of the V8 Super Trucks Championship. Yeah, we didn't even mention it in the uh, the build-up to this race. It's Kemers mm -hmm. again getting on the power too early. We are at the halfway stage. Six more races, including this one, to go. So uh, plenty of action still remaining in this championship. And looking further back, Eric Blix now really starting to hound James King in front of him. And King just looking a little bit loose going into the chicane at Abbey through bridge tricky corner this to get right and blick says thank you very much i'm going down the inside you have to wonder if he thought may as well maybe let him on through there to try and not over where the tires james king in that case because again that just pushes him back just down one spot i believe to p number six to put eric blicks into the top five maybe thinking big picture potentially he could be thinking that, he could be thinking that long game of uh, how we're getting on in this uh, event. But that's your top eight on the screen at the mm -hmm. moment. And you can see how just the gaps are starting to just play out a little bit here in this race. Now, the closest battle on track is the actually the one between James uh, Clifton Cockrell and Daniel Thompson into Cops Corner. Cockrell who's going to be ahead of Thompson who's not been having the best of seasons he'll admit himself um, and he's down there in 10th place yeah trying to continue to try and make a battle work again these guys have been back and forth it seems all race long and remember Daniel Thompson also finished in the top 10 in last year's run for the V8 Super Trucks Championship here at Silverstone so 
even with the small grid, he is on that line. Here's the lap times in the past couple of laps. Compared to Cockrell, though, you see he is slower by about a second a lap the past two times, in part, probably because he's behind a truck. When you put it like that, it's... Uh, yeah, absolutely. If, you, if you're... If you feel you're faster than the truck in front, and in fact, look at his different lines here. Cockrell will be able to get on the power a little bit sooner, taking that wider line, whereas Tops taking that Trouble for line. John Allen, who is the 11th car on track. He just had, was the first driver to slide into the grass through Abbey, and now he's sliding his way through a circle coming through who club. So let's take a look at the replay. He's driving a video game-themed truck today, and... That is the biggest brake lock we've seen all race from the slick, slip angle motorsports truck that ends up sending him spinning into club as well. Yep, yeah, and uh, gets in the power a little bit too soon. Spins it round. Crucially, Bobby Zelensky, first man to blink onto pit road here. And he's coming into pit just about a couple laps before halfway on lap number nine of this 20 lap race. So hoping that he can maybe have a bit more of an undercut to get away from the traffic maybe um, as he continues to get the tires set up. They do not need to take fuel. They are having a mandatory pit stop for tires here in this series. A 14-8 off and away he goes. Let's see if he goes through the proper pit exit. Yes, he does as he's back out onto the racetrack currently in 10th spot, but the rest of the field still has to pit. Yeah, absolutely. So the question now, is when do the other drivers pit? Do they pit early, like um, Bobby? Because uh, they were losing a little bit of time with Thomas O'Leary and Sven Kemmer as compared to uh, Bobby Zelensky. But if they manage to stay up one, maybe two more laps, okay, their lap times won't be as good as Bobby on the fresh tyres now, but they all have fresher tyres towards the end of the race here. It's a tricky scenario and it's it, it's a difficult one to see which way would be the right way to go right now falling along with thomas o'leary who has pulled away to a two second lead to spend commerce at this point it's going to be interesting to see who has the the proper strategy as they work their way through brooklyn's towards left field here is the running order on the side here of who's moved up to the field eric blix the biggest mover so far, gaining four spots after not being allowed to qualify for today. Thomas O'Leary's gained three spots. John Allen has fallen three spots since the start of the race. As O'Leary will stay out, Kamertz will stay out, Roos will stay out. Everyone except for James Kane, it looks like, is going to stay out for that top grouping as Kane is now into the pits, along with Justin Kruitov. Yep, so King deciding, I've had enough of those good years. I want to change those boots and down onto the pit road it comes then as you can see Krutov right behind him on pit road he's going to meet his uh, pit stall stop nicely on the marks doesn't overshoot and we've also got uh, Justin Krutov and uh, Daniel Thompson onto pit road as well with this one let's compare the pit stop times 14.8 for Bobby Zelensky 14.4 for uh, James King, Justin Krutov, 13.6, a really quick pit stop. He must have lined up perfectly in his pit box. Had to have there as he works his way out the pit exit. But the thing is, Bobby Zelensky jumped all of them. He absolutely jumped all of them here. Remember, first driver to come in with the 14.9 pit stop at 37, 38 seconds on the lane. He's already worked his way back up to P6 passing Clifton Cockrell. Now, look at that figure on screen right there. 28.8 mm -hmm. seconds, 28.4. It's coming down. Is that gap to the leader? And the thing is, we've been looking at the uh, the amount of time that it takes on the pit lane. If we look at Bobby Zelensky, look at the overall figure there. 37.9 seconds. He's well within that time of the race leader. He is absolutely on one, and I would expect him to take the lead if Thomas O'Leary doesn't pit. Well, he will, should pit this lap, and he does. Thomas O'Leary coming in after leading for much of the way. Kamaritz is going to match. Gabriel Ruse is going to come in. Eric Blixt will stay out for one more time. So the current top three are all in. Now the question is, with the Delta, is it going to be enough? Diego Malroa also followed them all in. 
but for that Lempol's racing truck, it will stay out one more time as Bobby Zelensky works his way through left field. Everyone's just stopping now into their stalls. So let's see if this Delta is going to line up here as he comes down the, past the start and finish line. Multiple trucks still pulling into their stalls, and he's going to jump them all by at least two, three, four seconds at the very least here. O'Leary's out the pit stall then, 14.2 seconds. Sven Kemmer's 14.0. We'll have a look at their times there. And that, well, means that Bobby Zelensky is going to be at least six seconds ahead of these guys on track as we're on to lap 11 of this race. And that early pit stop has obviously showed here. Now, how is it going to go towards the end of the race? We'll have to wait and see here. But certainly, these drivers, they, they've got a bit of a work on their hands now. Absolutely have to as we're halfway through this race here for the V8 Super Trucks Championship. As you follow along with Ben Kamertz, who's currently in net P3. Leader right now is Eric Blixt right now but he still has to come into pit to get his tires and for Kamertz remember he had led for much of the way this is now Blix showing up on the screen pardon me here for the Lempol's racing truck who remember had started had to start near the tail end of the field for today has been battling for top in the top five for parts of this race and now trying to maybe use strategy to get the fresher tires let's see if he comes in this time by here Paul I would imagine he'd come into pit. He's power sliding it into pit <laughs> road. So uh, he's had enough of those good years now on that, uh, on that V8 super truck. So he's coming onto pit road here. I would imagine that there's only one other man who hasn't made a pit stop. That's John Allen, who, of course, we saw having a spin earlier on. So I would imagine that he'll be coming in any time now. But Bobby Zelensky is coming round Woodcut once again. Lap 12 of the race now, and he's going to go past Eric Blix. There he goes. So Blix in his pit stall now. Getting his fresh tyres, dropping down the order again. And the interesting thing will be whether he comes out behind James King. Comes out of his pit stall, 14.3 seconds for Blix. Will we see King? Yep, there's King going through the screen right now. It's going to be close between those two as we head on out of the pit road and Blitz keeps ahead of King and that ends up with the fresher tires going to end up helping him in the long run of this as now that gains him at least that spot from King remember he made the pass before after cutting towards the bottom side to prior, coming into Priory before entering Brooklyn's so now he might be able to just sail on his way forward to be able to seal up the spot here in the end, though, Bobby Zelensky still cycles out back to the lead, followed by Thomas O'Leary, Spen Kamertz, Gabriel Ruse, and Eric Blix rounding out the top five right now. As pit stops, just finishing up now, John Allen. Remember, he still has to still come in as the only truck not to pit, as he's been near the back for much of this race. But right now for Blix, he's in the driver's seat to finish in the top five today. Yeah, certainly... Uh looking strong for a top five position and certainly uh, getting himself down for the hard charger award in terms of uh, the most positions gained here in this race but uh, certainly he's uh, he's giving it a good go he'll be certainly pushing to see if he can get to uh, see if he can get to Gabriel Ruse in this one and with that, we'll see what happens here in the final few laps for this 20-lap event for round number seven of the V8 Super Trucks. You're watching the V8 Super Trucks Championship on the iRacing Esports Network. We'll be back right after this. Averaging 0 0.10 gallons per lap. Pit stop at 5 gallons. Change right side only. Hit box in 10, 9, 8, 1. Bingo. 10, 4. Adding 5 gallons. Changing right side tires.
And welcome back everyone to the V8 Super Trucks Championship here on iRacing Esports Network presented by RaceSpot TV. Right now focusing on Spen Commerce. Today has been a very calm race as you see right now two second difference to him and Thomas O'Leary. There were two other drivers that ended up coming into today's race having hardware issues and Marco Mulgren and Eric Andre which are both unfortunate situations leaving Spen to basically run is very loathsome in the Rackles on line number 66. Yeah, always um, always disappointing to hear that people are having uh, technical issues, but um, you know, it happens. And this is one of the things that I like to say is a direct comparison with, um, with motor racing, even at the top level of NASCAR or, uh, or Formula One or World, GT, you know, World, World Endurance Championship. They have technical problems as well us sim races we have different technical problems but there's still technical problems which cause us to end up either retiring from a race or even not being able to compete in a race so it's unfortunate that that happens but uh, it just goes to show there is a, a direct comparison between uh, between the sim world and the real world absolutely right now for Ben you got to think too remember he started up in second spot and it led a couple laps before locking up the brakes coming into Abbey and since then he's just been seemingly struggling to gain the rhythm he had before because before he was near the back end still of Bobby Zelensky now he's seven seconds back after the pit cycle as well he's just not been able to gain that same rhythm or even get by Tom back by Thomas O'Leary who also made the pass after the mistake through Abbey early on in this race yeah Thomas O'Leary has been uh, he's been a really good one for today we'll look at the uh, positions gained then just to uh, emphasize it once again and uh, Thomas O'Leary in that second place he's gained two positions started in fourth as Sven Kemmers runs over the grass on the exit of Cops once again so Kemmers down one position Gabriel Ruse down one position as well Eric Blix the biggest gainer he'll certainly be a shoe in for for being in part of the fan vote for the uh, for the uh, uh, the hard charger award because of course it is a fan vote by you the spectators and uh, what we would want to see is basically anyone outside of the podium positions who has gained positions who you think has been the most exciting driver let us know what uh, what your thoughts are in the chat and also let us know what you think at the moment really the only two that we could say is possibly uh, being able to go for the uh, the hard charger in terms of it most exciting would be Clifton Cockrell or Daniel Thompson at the moment really because everyone else has either lost positions or in the case of Eric Blitz he'll be automatically in that fan vote on the uh, Socks Out Racing Facebook page um, because of him gaining the most positions here today. Yeah that is pending if he can make sure he doesn't make a mistake and lose a lot of those positions of course as right now we're coming towards five laps to go of course, the winner of that fan vote ends up getting one free month of I Analyze Racing for the I Analyzing Hard I Analyze Racing Hard Charger Reward. As you were discussing there, once again, be sure to put who you feel is having the most exciting drive of a driver finishing at or above their starting position today. Oh, we've had an issue for Daniel Thompson. Unless he's down, I believe, at Vale. We'll get a look on the replay here. Daniel Thompson in 10th place going into Vale. Sorry to uh, cut across you there, Justin. <laughs> Went in too ha hard into uh, Vale. Got the back end all loose. Of course, not a lot of weight over the back of this truck here. And uh, so easy to lose that rear end. And you know, that's a, nearly the second time he's had it run through the grass just about, I've noticed, with him in that 10th spot. It seems with the fresher tires, it's been much more slicker now. As now we look at the times with Ben Commerce because he's now been able to gain a tenth back on Thomas O'Leary last time by. So right now, with the less than five laps to go here in round number seven, Spen's just trying to focus on one thing, closing that two-second gap to at least finish where he started off today's race. Yeah, and um, I, I tell you what, it's going to be a tough ask really because Thomas has been uh, really he's been really consistent with his lap times as Thomas I, I will mention that because he's, uh, he's put in lap after lap in that truck and uh, been able to keep 
within the similar sort of lap times. I mean, a look at his last four laps, a 53-6 after his uh, pit stop, and a 54-3, 54-3, 54-8. So we've just seen that slight drop off in pace due to the uh, the tyres being used there but the, the, the lap time certainly from Thomas have been really consistent it's been really good to see somebody uh, to come in here and uh, compete with Sven okay maybe not keeping up with uh, Bobby Zelensky at the moment but doing a good job in second place nonetheless yeah really impressive and clean drive for the most part today to be able to continue to hold on to the second spot everyone's just basically Locked into the rhythm with four laps to go at this point. The question is, is can everyone keep up the pressure, keep up the rhythm and make sure they don't end up have burning up their tires too much, especially since Bobby Zelensky, who was the first driver to pit, mind you, in his truck for Slip Angle Motorsports, is still trying to hold on to a 5.5 second lead. Look at that lap 16 difference of a seven tenths of a second on Zelensky from compared to Thomas O'Leary. Yeah, that's really good. I mean, we just saw O'Leary make a mistake on the exit of Cop's Corner. He's pushing and he's giving absolutely everything he can. And it'd be interesting to see whether he can gain any more time. Maybe Bobby Zelensky's tyres just starting to go off. Because, of course, it was the end of lap eight that Bobby Zelensky made his pit stop. Well, he's had eight laps on those tyres now. So he's going into uncharted ter territory for Bobby now in terms of how that truck will feel but it will be a lighter truck so it will be a little bit easier on its tyres as we go into the final part of this race. Yeah, Zelensky's trying to continue to maintain the gap or at least grow it and then some with coming towards three laps ago this time by at the stripe. Stripe as you see falling behind Sven Kamert still in the third spot in the fourth spot Gabriel Ruse in the fifth spot Eric Blixt as Ben has a big slide. You see the power slide there coming out of Abbey. That was a great save there to make sure that truck didn't bobble its way towards the wall there, Paul. Well, we'll have a look at that one then from on board into Abbey. Tricky chicane through the left. And then here is on the power on the curb. Whoa, thank you very much. That's all getting a bit squirrely. Through bridge corner as well, just a little bit of sliding. So those tyres appear to be uh, just going off now and uh, going away from their fire ideal grip levels that they would want from those tyres. Yeah, everyone's been having that all race long, even more so on the fresher tyres. Now that since the start of the race, there's been more rubber put on the track as Ben Kamert takes the, the corner a bit wide, coming out of the cops oh, and runs through the grass. Did you, I don't know if you saw that from Eric Blix. We're going to look at that one again because he was uh, sideways coming out of Cop's Corner. Hopefully we'll catch it here on this camera angle. He's got a little bit of damage on the left-hand side of his truck as well. But coming out there onto the grass and then, whoa, keeps it held there. I seen that just at the, about the same time as you him sliding to the grass. That was about the same spot Spen was as at that same point when he worked his way to the corner but Blix still hanging on to the spot he's on the freshest tires other than John Allen on the racetrack right now as you can see that loses him a bit of time of course to Gabriel Ruse who we haven't talked about much since the battles that he had in the early going to the race to try and hang on to P4 in that work of a kinetic racing truck that's about a 1.8 second gap he's been able to maintain since this run has continued on that he's starting to now basically hope he keeps the cushion up. His tyres are one lap older though mm -hmm. than, uh, than Eric Blix. Look ahead as well. That time in front to Sven Kemmert is dropping as well. So uh, Ruse and Blix currently have the edge over Sven Kemmert. We could see a battle on for the final step of the podium. Yeah, this could very well heat up here right now. Bobby Zelensky crossing the start of finish line for two laps to go. Right now, Cameron still trying to hold on. Gabriel Ruse slowly but surely reeling him in step by step. Let's see the times here. The gap's down to a full second down the front straightaway. Full second gain there on the lap time. Remember, Spen also went for the slide, taking the corner of Cops a bit wide as well. Compared to Ruz and Blixt, they were just about even. Yeah, so both of them gaining 
on Sven Kermers then. We'll look on board with Gabriel Rose. You can see the man that he's challenging ahead. That truck, that Michael's online truck in front. Down the hangar straight. He's just about maybe getting close enough to start feeling a, a slipstream, feel the draft effect of that truck in front. But Ruse, as you see, 1.1 seconds. Such a tricky corner, the exit has stuck. Into the brakes again, hard braking zone. You need a lot of grip, especially through this right hander of club. And you can see Sven, look at the black lines that he's leaving on the track there. That, he's using his tyres a lot more than the drivers behind, but with only about a lap and a half remaining in this one, he can afford to do that. Yeah, he continues to power slide his way through Abbey as well through the tight chicanes as Gabriel Roos continues to try and chase on. Bobby Zelensky continues to control the tempo of this race as he works his way towards left field. But the focus stays on this battle to try and get onto the podium for today. Late breaking from Gabriel Roos to close up the gap a bit more to Sven Kamertz. Can he keep the exit speed though? Able to keep the gap nearly the same. The question is, can he hold on? Going his way through left field, right in front of the fans. The white flag is out for Bobby Selensky. Coming down the front straight away towards Cops. As they are now very close. Roos is reeling in Sven bit by bit as this is down to a gap of three tenths of a second. He is coming and coming quick here on the white flag, white flag lap. He certainly is, he's giving absolutely everything here is Gabriel. He started this race in third place. He wants to finish it at least in third place to uh, not lose any positions here today. Kemet not being uh, the best one after his mistake earlier on in the event. Down the hangar straight. This is his best opportunity, but we've seen how Kemets has struggled through Club Corner and also through Abbey as well. So those are the key points that Ruse needs to be right behind as he goes into store here. Kemets backing up the corner a little bit more, working his way through Stowe. Gap stays about the same distance-wise as they work their way now through Vale. Let's see how Cameron's handles it here. Hits the curbs a bit. Works his way now through club. This time, not as much of his power slide through the corner. So that is what Sven needed there to try and maintain the gap to Gabriel Ruse. Let's see if he's able to do so now through Abbey, which is, the one, as you mentioned, been one of the error trouble points. Starts wheel hopping a little bit. Gabriel Ruse closes up the gap a bit more so as Cameron slides his way out towards bridge. But for Bobby Zelensky, he has been running away with things since the pit stop. Bobby Zelensky in clean air in the virtual two reality truck for Slip Angle Motorsports. He's going to get win number six of the season coming at the halfway point. Bobby Zelensky continues the class sessions. Absolute domination as Thomas O'Leary finishes off in the second spot as Sven Kamertz holds on for third, Gabriel Ruiz in fourth. Eric Blix power slides his way to fifth spot. So a wild finish to this one for that battle to try and get onto the podium for Kamertz and Ruiz still on the track. Right now, Diego Melro trying to work his way through. Currently in P number seven, he's gonna get to the start and finish line cleanly. Followed by Justin Kruitoff, Clifton Cockrell behind them, and then Daniel Thompson behind them as Kruitoff going to seal up P number eight. Cockrell, the next truck to worry about in that Fresh Sport Athletic Club truck here in the V8 Super Trucks Championship. Working his way to the corners, bit higher line, working his way through left field now towards Woodcote and tries to get himself towards the line. But overall, for these drivers here, Paul, regardless where they finished a very clean race throughout the day today yeah really good job from the drivers here today and uh, we're able to get the job done here and uh, we're able to keep it all clean some good moves as well throughout this race but uh, you gotta say hats off Bobby Zelensky was put under pressure early on but was unable to capitalize on mistakes throughout that race He's following along now with John Allen. He finishes off in 11th spot for this race as he crosses the line right now. But overall, 
Everyone had a very clean race today here with the V8 Super Trucks Championship for round number seven. As Bobby Zelensky comes out on top of this one, win number six of the season for him today with Thomas O'Leary following them off behind them in the second spot. Behind them, Sven Kamertz in the third spot to finish off in the podium, holding off to Gabriel Ruse, followed by Eric Blix, James King, Diego Melro, Clifton Cockrell, Daniel Thompson, Justin Kruitoff round out the top 10, followed by John Allen in this one. So that's going to to wrap things up before today's post-race coverage and what was an exciting run. Bobby Zelensky, you deserve to do burnouts. You've absolutely dominated this season. Averaging 0 0.10 gallons per lap. Pit stop at 5 gallons. Change right side only. Pace box in 10, 9, 8, 1. Bingo. 10, 4. Adding 5 gallons. Changing right side tires. Welcome back to the post-race show here on the V8 Super Trucks Championship from Silverstone Round 7 of the Championship. Coming to you on the iRacing Esports Network, brought to you by Racebot TV. Let's just show you the results of that uh, interesting race from today. Some good early pressure, but he was able to come through. Bobby Zielinski taking the win. And uh, second place then for Thomas O'Leary with Sven Kemez in third, Gabriel Ruiz fourth, with Eric Blix in fifth, James King sixth, with Diogo Melo in seventh, Clifton Cockrell eighth, ahead of Daniel Thompson, Justin Kruitoff, and then finally John Allen rounds out your results for today. And well, why don't we bring in then, for the post-race show, race winner number six for him, Bobby Zelensky. Bobby, talk us about that race because... Those first few laps, you were under some intense pressure and uh, Sven Kemas was really coming at you there. Yeah, and he uh, ended up getting the better of me. Um, yeah, first few laps were weird. I was just having a real trouble with the, the wheel hopping and locking up the rears, basically. I was just 
I was all over the place, and um, I really messed up turn one, and then he got to my right side, headed into to the S's, and I just threw it in there to try to get in front of him. It worked, but I cut the corner, so I had to, I had to slow down and had to give him the position, basically. And then um, and then we just put on the pressure, put on the pressure, and uh, kind of forced him into a mistake as we looked to his inside and, and got the lead back. And, uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a kind of a tale of two halves. It was two different races, that first half and the last half, but it's a lot of fun. And you, you were the first person to, to come into the pits uh, in that race. Just um, what was the thinking behind that? Was it to get some clean air, get some fresh rubber on, to put some good couple of laps into it when the others came in? you knew that you'd have that uh, undercut. Yeah, well, the, the first thing is I didn't want to lose the lead to to uh, Thomas. And he got to second, so I was like, okay, he's pretty fast, and he's kind of holding with me. Second, well, my tires were pretty destroyed from the battle with Sven and, and kind of the messing up I did before he passed me. So my tires were destroyed, and I was like, well, I'm confident that if I short pit, and even if he like has three left newer tires, I can hold on. Because I can just control my car now. I just kind of got into a groove where I'm not sliding. So that'll definitely be way better on my tires. So I just took the risk and pitted early so I didn't uh, get, you know, jumped. And, uh, you know, bet on myself to kind of have better tire wear with older tires. And, well, uh, we, we are past the halfway stage of the season. We've got Mossport coming up the next one on the 11th of August. Then we've got the Indianapolis Road Course. Uh, VIR, Mid-Ohio and Bathurst, how are you looking for the second half of the season? Is it more of a case of keep pushing yourself and keep uh, being the best that you can or maybe just thinking, right, I can afford to just back off a little bit, look after my championship lead here? I really just try to honestly stay in the same mindset and just, I mean, I, I do this like a race by race. So you, don't, you really don't think about championship or anything. You just, yeah, you, you just try to, your best every race and uh there's a couple tracks like the next race i'm not too happy well i'm not that happy about it but i'm not too feeling too good about most sport and then vir is a total unknown for me but uh and we'll, we'll show up and do our best like normal and see what happens uh, well before we uh, we'll let you go then anyone you want to give a quick mention to who gets it done for you today yeah, shout out to Socks Out Racing for everything, and then obviously the sponsors on my car, Virtual Reality TV, Payday GG, and then Virtual Racing School sponsors me across all sim racing. Um, yeah, shout out to RaceBot, and uh, shout out to you. You had a long day with the broadcasting, I see. So, uh, yeah, hey, thanks shout for out to you. <laughs> thanks, <laughs> thanks for that. I appreciate it. Well, congratulations. Another race win here, and onwards to, uh, to Mossport. Thanks. That's uh, Bobby Zelensky then with the uh, the big win. And second place, Privateer. And what a race it was for him. Thomas O'Leary, talk us through your race. He started off in fourth place. We're able to get up into third pretty early on there. And then uh, capitalise on the mistake from Sven Kemet. Yeah, it was an interesting race. I mean, for me, it was my first time. So I was just trying to keep it clean. But... I mean, if, if the opportunity pre presents itself, then I'm going to take it. Well, you mentioned it's your first time then in the series. Yeah, How did you find it? How did you find wrestling a V8 super truck around Silverstone? It was definitely interesting trying to keep the tyres under control, but and I've driven a bit of trucks before just in terms of official racing, but I haven't driven it that much on road courses. So it was different, but really enjoyable at the same time. Absolutely, and uh, can we look forward to you uh, being around for the for the rest of the season, second half of the season here? I'm hoping to. I enjoyed that race, and I think going forward, it's definitely something I'd like to keep doing, and maybe uh, once I get a bit more practice, try and challenge Bobby for some wet race wins. Well, it'd be great to see that, absolutely. And uh, just out of interest then, as a new driver to the series, you know, was the biggest challenge the looking after the tyres here, or was it getting used to the characteristics of the truck i think it was more the tires i mean in my first stint i was quite relaxed at the start and i think that helped me towards the end of the stint um but then once i pitted i could see the gap to bobby was quite well, a, lot, a lot further than it was prior to the pit stops so i was pushing hard to try and make up the distance and i think then i ruined the tires then at that point 
which then meant that I couldn't catch him towards the end. But I mean, if I can get on top of how the tyres work, I'm looking forward to the next few races. Absolutely. Well, before we let you go then, is there anyone you want to give a quick mention to, a quick thank you to? Well, I'd like to thank Sven for all his setup work. I think it was, you know, it made a difference today. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to the next races. Well, thank you very much for joining us and congratulations on the second place there, Thomas. Thank you very much. So second place for Thomas O'Leary and we'll bring in another podium sitter, Sven Kermatz and uh, Sven. A, a mixed race, shall we say. You, you were able to put pressure on Bobby Zelensky to take the lead and then just a little mistake locking up the rear tyres going into Abbey, uh, Abbey Chicane. Talk us through that uh, that race from you. Yeah, I suppose I described this pretty well. It was uh, uh, unmistakably my, the best start to a race uh, I've had this season, at least. Uh, um, I've been managing to get to the lead uh, for, for a short while, but uh, yeah, that lock up on the, well, what was it, lap five or lap, lap six with the rear tires that uh, that kind of destroyed that set uh, so late in the stint. And then it was just uh, surviving until the pit stops came. And then uh, after the pit stop, I said to myself, right, I'm going to take care of his tires, just uh, do it, uh, relax on the first few laps. And uh, still, still at the end, they still dropped off. So uh, it's definitely not the ideal race, but I still have some uh, some good things to look uh, to look at. Yeah, we we certainly saw you you struggling, especially in the last two laps with uh, Gabriel and Eric catching up to you. Uh, were you ever in, in in any doubt, or did you think you just had enough of a gap to keep ahead of Gabriel? Well, I did think I had enough of a gap, but uh, yeah, those last few laps, the, the the time dropped quite quite a lot. So, uh, somewhat lucky, I managed to stay in front. But uh, for both Gabe uh, and Thomas, they both drove uh, splendid races. So, I uh, can't. Uh, so they did, uh, definitely did very well. And Bobby, of course, congrats to the win again. Uh, well, we move on to Canadian Tire Mossport uh, for the next round. What are your thoughts going into that race? Is it something that you can try and attack? It's a difficult track to to master. Uh, yeah, it should be interesting. I suppose it will be well somewhat similar to uh, to Brands Hatch, I suppose. But uh, yeah, it will be interesting with the new suspension update that we just got. Uh, everything feels a little bit different again. So it's it's pretty much a hit and miss whether it will, will the truck will actually suit the track properly or not. And uh, well. Before we let you go, then third place. Anyone you want to thank? Anyone who helps you get the uh, get it done today? Uh, thank you to Stephen for uh, and everyone from Stocks Hot Racing for hosting the event. Uh, thank you for the broadcast and then our sponsors for Radicals Online would be Six Sideways, JRT, Cranfield Simulator, also Sim Race Driving Simulator, and Arma Centrum. Well, thank you very much and uh, congratulations on the podium position, there, Sven. Thank you. That's Sven Kemmerts. Now we're going to speak to the man who gained the most positions in that race today, Eric Blixt. And uh, Eric, you were starting down uh, towards the back of the field in ninth place. I suppose when when a grid's this size, having a, a back of the grid penalty it doesn't hurt quite as much here. Just talk us through your race. If Eric is here. There we go. There we go. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I started from the back. Uh, as you said, the grid wa wasn't very large, so it didn't matter as much. But I had some some troubles getting past other drivers in the beginning, but it was fun trying to get past. And uh, you, you, you pitted later. You, you took a, a late pit stop. And did it help having those uh, those fresher tyres towards the uh, towards the end there, catching up to Gabriel and Sven? Yeah, I don't really think so, but <laughs> I wanted a lap in the lead, so <laughs> <laughs> I did I did it for the for the airtime. But but for sure the tyres were a little bit fresher. But I also think I had dialed in the setup a little bit better in the long run. <laughs> You know, a teammate of mine, Diogo Melro, uh, did exactly the same at Interlagos, so uh, <laughs> you're not the first one in this series to do that. But uh, looking forward, then, the second half of the the championship, we've got into that with Silverstone. Mossport is the next track. What what are your thoughts on uh, on that one? Yeah, it's a, it's a scary track. And it's very fast, and it's sort of difficult to pass, but it's a tight track, so I like it. 
Well, before we uh, let you go, is there anyone you want to uh, thank while you're here in the uh, in the commentary booth? Yeah, yeah, just everyone at Socks Out Racing for organising this. Okay, well, thank you very much, Eric, and uh, well done on the uh, the move through the field. And you, you're one of the people that's going to be in the fan vote for the uh, for the Hard Charger Award this round. Thank you. So that's Eric Blixt there, and what we'll do is we'll have a word with a man who had had a, f a few sort of uh, incidents throughout the race, but was um, a couple of spins as well, but was able to gain positions in that race. Daniel Thompson, um, not Daniel, if you if you're there, it's not the best. Uh, not not the best. You won't. You've gained positions. I'm always one that looks to uh, to the positives, and you gain positions. He started off 11th, finished up in ninth. Just talk us through your uh, your race here today, Daniel. If he remembers to switch his microphone on, we're going to be two for two here with uh, <laughs> with these interviews. Looks like it. Yeah, I'm afraid we're going to have to uh, we'll leave Daniel then because uh, it's not coming through there. But, uh, yeah, I certainly uh, would have liked to have uh, spoken to him. But, uh, yeah, in the end, uh, not able to speak to him. Uh, so uh, before we get off then, just to give our thoughts on the Hard Charger Award as well. As I mentioned, it is... Uh, let's get some music on there in the background. As I mentioned, the I, the I Analyze Hard Charger Award in this series. It's open to a fan vote on the Socks Out Racing Facebook group, so make sure you check out that on there. Eric Blixt will be the first of those people who will be up for the vote. And uh, uh, the Hard Charger, the, the most exciting driver uh, from our thoughts here in the commentary booth was certainly going to be for Clifton Cockrell then started off 10th, finished up in 8th place, so gained position, so was uh, available to, uh, able to, eligible for that vote, so make sure you check out the Socks Out Racing Facebook group for all of the uh, information on that fan vote, that will be uh, at some time, but uh, well, before we get off, just a few thank yous, of course, it was myself, Paul Smith, and Justin Prince in the Contra Justin having to uh, get off to another event. Thank you to Istvan Bello and TrekCams22.com for the supply of the truck cameras here today. The overlay design brought to you by Andreas Werner from Andwern Designs. Development of the graphics that you see here by Simon Grossman from AppGeneering.com with their AirTivo product, which we are proud to be behind uh, for our TV graphics and of course Nick Thiessen providing live timing as always on Racebot TV and well it wasn't the biggest of uh, fields here today but it certainly was a good entertaining race congratulations to Bobby Zelensky in this one a great debut from Thomas O'Leary in second place and Sven Kemmerts rounding out your podium positions Make sure you check out the Socks Out Racing V8 Super Trucks in a couple of weeks' time when we'll be coming to you from Canadian Tire Motorsport. And, well, that promises to be an interesting race. But for myself, Paul Smith, from Justin Prince as well, it's a good night here from Racebot TV here on the iRacing Esports Network. a presentation of the iRacing Esports Network.